Over the years, research and clinical practice have shown us that people living with Parkinson's disease often develop swallowing impairments right from the earliest stages of the disease. But it can be hard to identify the signs of these impairments. This video provides information about the nature of swallowing impairments. Having difficulty swallowing or chewing is also called dysphagia. In Parkinson's disease, muscles do not perform correctly because the signals sent by the brain to the muscles are scrambled. The muscles and structures involved in swallowing are like a complex and very precise system of gears. When one or more parts of the system are not performing perfectly, the entire mechanism can be affected, which makes the act of swallowing less effective. In addition, the brain has trouble identifying signals sent back by the body. The most obvious examples involve chewing and coughing. When a person eats or drinks, they first put food into their mouth. After chewing for several seconds to make a paste, called the bolus, the tongue prepares the bolus to the back of the mouth toward the throat. The bolus first passes through a tube, called the pharynx, before traveling through the esophagus and into the stomach. Sometimes, food could go down the wrong way, in other words, down the trachea. This can cause the person to choke or aspirate, and food could end up in the lungs if the coughing is not strong enough to clear the airway. Dysphagia can manifest in several different ways. It is often most obvious at mealtimes, but can also be observed when swallowing saliva. Here are a few signs that a person might have dysphagia. Difficulty bringing food to the mouth due to tremors. An overproduction of saliva and difficulty keeping saliva or food in the mouth. Taking an unusually long time to eat, that is, more than 30 minutes. Coughing while swallowing, but especially after swallowing food or drink. Coughing may occur several minutes after swallowing and even after the end of a meal. Greater difficulty swallowing liquids, which can lead to more frequent coughing or the speaking voice becoming wet. The sensation that there is something in the throat after swallowing. A long delay between the time food is placed in the mouth and the person swallows. This is called a delayed swallow reflex. In other words, the bolus may remain in the back of the mouth for a time before moving into the pharynx. Dysphagia can also affect day-to-day -day life. It can lead to a loss of appetite, a reduction in how much one eats during a meal, and less interest in food. You may notice changes in your food tastes and preferences. All of this could eventually lead to significant weight loss. Dysphagia can lead to a withdrawal from social activities that involve food, such as dinner parties or going out to restaurants. This may make the person feel isolated. Fewer social contacts can also have a significant effect on a person's abilities to communicate. Because their swallowing mechanism is less effective, People who experience dysphagia are at a higher risk of developing aspiration pneumonia. Aspiration occurs when some or all of the bolus, which contains bacteria, gets into the trachea and enters the lungs. Unfortunately, our lungs lack protection against these types of bacteria. Pneumonia has a variety of different symptoms, including fever, sudden and generalized fatigue, greater than usual difficulty breathing, persistent cough, congested lungs, and wheezing. If you experience these symptoms, it is important to consult a healthcare professional as soon as possible because pneumonia can usually be treated with antibiotics. The healthcare professionals who assess and treat people with communication and swallowing impairments are called speech therapists. They can suggest effective exercises tailored to your ability to swallow and your needs.
We hope that you and your loved ones will find these suggestions helpful.